How is it going guys? It's Eclipse here and welcome to today's update news video where we're going to be talking about not just the news itself but we're going to be talking about some of the bundles that Wargaming keep producing every single week and we're going to give a slight overview as to why they're particularly not very good value and what sort of things you need to be looking out for when you purchase the bundles themselves and of course we'll talk about the future of world of tanks console as well within this video too and that'll be slightly towards the later half of the video but of course uh, we'll get into the key details for this season now first things first of course we have the modern armor arms race season going on right now it's available until the 12th of october so you have i believe roughly three weeks until the end of the season in which case you'll be able to you know get to season rank 100 and get those rewards for already completing it um for me personally i've already done it um, I'm sure many of you who are watching this video have already completed the season as well. It's not particularly too difficult and as the weeks go on and there's more challenges to complete, uh, it kind of becomes a hell of a lot easier for you to be able to complete to rank 100 and I'm sure many of you casual players, you know, you come on and play five games a day can definitely get this done really, really easily. Now moving on, of course, the arms race season tanks will be available uh, until one week after the season ends. So that's the 19th of October. The season tanks are, of course, the T-55A, the T-72M1 and the Object 934. Um, yeah, not particularly any of them that I would really recommend spending a lot your money on if you haven't already picked them up. Uh, the T-72M1 being probably the best of the three. The other two are pretty mediocre. You ain't going to be doing too much with them. Of course, we have key cards uh, getting refreshed next week, and there's a big update next week that you'll be able to actually complete. Of course, if you haven't earned the T95 FV201 Chieftain, then you want to make sure that you've completed that. You need 400 points uh, in terms of within the game in the last like basically month you had to be able to complete it all you had to do was win one game gives you three or not win but if you come top within your uh, team in terms of xp you'll cut you'll get three points and then second to uh, i think it's third get four no two points and then if you come fourth to uh, seventh i believe you get like one point um of course over a period of time you're going to be able to pick up the chieftain uh, after you get 400 points so yeah definitely a decent decent tank gonna do a video on it very soon that you'll be able to see have a really good gameplay in it i think it's like a 7k plus uh, actual damage that is not combined um yeah really decent game to showcase to you guys later on in the week we've got an eastern sniper urn challenge going on for this week of course yesterday's video covered that in detail that you'll be able to actually take a look at of course the yatsi wz 121 gft tank destroyer from the chinese line um yeah really really nice tank to actually play it's going to be a very nice one Good DPM, fairly solid armor, I'd say. You know, it's going to get penned by premium rounds, but then, yeah, again, what actual tank in World of Tanks console can not get penned by premium rounds? So there we go. Action Heroes content, of course, is the last week for you to be able to pick up the overpriced bundles that Wargaming is selling on the Action Heroes front. Uh, yeah, you saw my reaction to some of those that they're releasing, especially with regards to the Hero Skins and the John Rambo 3D Hero Commander. I think they're like 4,000 gold each, which is over £10 just for a commander within a game that doesn't really offer that many more benefits than some commanders that you can get for free within the game yeah i don't think it's really where i'd be spending my money if i had 10 or 15 pounds to spend on something within the game of course we have the on track event for the wz 111 or 113 gft that's going on uh, that's until the 28th of september and of course these tanks got buffed and if you want to check out the video on these tanks it was last week and you'll be able to find that in the update news playlist that i'll link at the end of this video for you to have a look at if you haven't already seen the buffs that actually happened to these chinese tank destroyers from tier 5 to 10 they all got kind of rebalanced and buffed 
Of course, we have the International Day of Peace Challenge coming in for the week. Uh, you can check out the details of that in yesterday's video on the update news. And of course, the same with the Tier 10 Silver Challenge. The Silver Challenge, however, will be able to net you a ton of silver. And my recommendations, if you're going to be playing World of Tanks this week, is or over the weekend this week, then yeah, I would 100% make sure that you actually uh, get in your Tier 10 tanks over the weekend. I believe these come in on Friday as of the recording of this video. Of course, if you're watching it in like a week's time and the event's already over, then it's not really much to you. Uh, but definitely the 500 damage to enemy tanks or 500 spotting or detecting two enemies in a surviving battle, they are all very easy to do. And mostly every single person will be able to do this. This channel can only be completed with tier 10 tanks and it's just constantly uh, able to farm the silver. I would 100% pick a medium tank that can with high penetration that can just pen its rounds continuously high dpm get the da damage dished out against your opponents but also have the ability to spot to get further silver within the game once you do that you're going to be able to earn a hell of a lot more silver and if you aren't interested in playing the cold war game mode then this is a brilliant way to earn some silver because uh, obviously as everyone knows the cold war game mode is the best way to earn some silver now the new premium tank, the M4A1 FL10, of course, is the kind of AMX 1375 turret slapped on a Sherman. Um, and then, yes, just got a little bit of everything. Uh, autoloader, of course, as with the French uh, turrets and guns. Uh, yeah, I don't think that this tank is particularly broken. But if you want to check out my rundown of the vehicle, then yes, yesterday's video also covers that. Long haul, as always, you have to complete well, placing the top seven XP owners on your team in 75 battles, which is fairly difficult if you're a casual player. Um, and if you're a more advanced player, someone that can consistently come in the top seven every single game, it still takes you 75 battles, meaning on average, you're going to have to play 10 games, well, just over 10 games per day continuously where you do that seven uh, to be able to actually complete the operation within one week of course you can do two lots of that to be able to get your hands on a potential key card and to be honest with you 90% of the time you're going to be getting a confidential key card so don't go grinding it thinking oh I'm going to earn a top secret key card and get a premium tank because most likely you'll get this one and the chance of getting a premium tank is 10% of the chance uh, of this so yeah and to be fair the premium tanks available in a confidential key card are awful uh, and yeah definitely not something I would want to be grinding out extra time if I didn't have it within the game because it's not really that worth it. Now getting on to a controversial or a talking point of this video like we mentioned in the beginning is of course the discounted bundles and Wargaming's kind of method for releasing these bundles how they realistically work out in game and whether you should actually spend your hard-earned gold and your hard-earned cash to be able to get that gold on these tanks. Now you'll see that the first bundle is a 60% savings. Now even though it is 60%, it's still 17,000 gold, which is going to set you back a grand total of about £50 in Great British Pounds. Of course, that's like, what, $70, maybe even more than that, uh, to be able to pick up these tanks in total. And of course, yes, they are broken tanks in the form of the Rheinmetall Scorpion. But of course, many of you will have been able to pick up this tank for free. So that tank is completely pointless. And for those of you that have the Fatherland, then yes, that is also completely pointless. Um, I, I guess in terms of if you have 17,000 gold on your account uh, for some unknown reason, then yeah, maybe you will want to be able to purchase the Somu, a heavy tank, uh, because you can essentially get it for a 60% savings. But you do have to actually have the full price gold on the account um, because, of course, Wargaming refund you the gold that you spend on the bundle if you have the tanks that are in the bundle. Um, so essentially, you pay 17,000 gold and you'll get um, a refund on the Rheinmetall Scorpion and the Fatherland if you already own them. So you basically get the 60% discount on the no Nomad Somua if you didn't have it as the only tank in that bundle. Um, only problem is, is that, yes, 
as above here all premium vehicles purchased from the store come with their own vehicle slot and a mix of standard and premium ammo now the mix of standard and premium ammo are charged with gold so often the price or the base price of these bundles is boosted up by the fact that they give you a ton of standard and premium ammo involved within the bundle which costs you the gold causing the savings to actually potentially go down because how many of you would have actually spent money real money on paying for ammunition in each of the tanks um probably not very many of you and i certainly know that i wouldn't want to be spending like 50 gold per shell or 10 gold per shell and like 60 gold per game just firing premium ammo uh, yeah it's not a good way to kind of keep your gold balance up and certainly um i don't think like this whole fact that they add these in and i'm pretty sure that they add them to the price of the bundle as well as opposed to just the standard price of the bundle now don't forget that also some of these bundles have commanders which are charged at the full gold price of the commander as to the savings so a lot of the time although these tanks have a good 50% savings look here the Wojciech 2D com standard commander is bundled in there with you and so yes you will be charged for the commander of course that is probably not actually the case in this one uh, because the Wojciech 2D standard commander comes with the Wojciech uh, Panzer V Alfs G, but a lot of the time they don't actually, and that in fact they are just an additional commander to boost up the price. I don't like these strategies from Wargaming. I like the fact that they give these good bundles that actually are fairly decent value for money because you'll probably pay paying what. £35 for this bundle right here and essentially you'll get three tier 8 premium tanks or two tier 8 premiums and a tier 7 which can't really be said for any of the other wargaming products like World of Tanks uh, PC or World of Warships where you pay probably £40 for just one tank. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of glad that console have this kind of economy that is actually, you know, somewhat okay in terms of the pricing if you compare it to the other games in Wargaming's uh, arsenal. Uh, but I certainly don't think that they are the best price and certainly in some of the cases where the black tank bundles come out for like 60,000 gold when I call them out uh, because sometimes they do need calling out when it comes to some of the pricing of the bundles and some of the most recent ones where I think they tried to charge 66,000 gold the grand total price of about 170 pounds or what 250 dollars for one bundle in a game that's the price of about five AAA rated games for the sake of, I think it was like three tanks. Yeah, unbelievable the pricing on some of those kind of things. Of course, you have the weekly deals. And to be honest with you, these are my favorite ones each week. And that is the weekly deals where you get just a flat 50% off just a single tank. Of course, the best way to do it is if you actually do own multiple of the tanks. So say if I earn the Ramital and the Fatherland, you'd actually get 60% off the Nomad Somua. But of course, if you don't own multiple... And then this is the best way to get the tank that you actually want if it comes up in the weekly deals. And of course, for the most part, the weekly deals are actually usually pretty good and overpowered tanks. Unfortunately, this week we get the 59 pattern, an absolutely diabolical tank. And no one should ever buy this tank if it was down to me. And of course, the T44-100 is yet again a pretty mediocre slash bad uh, premium tank currently within world of tanks i just don't think it has realistically anything that i'd want to spend my gold on and certainly not four thousand of it compared to some of the premium tanks that you could pick up for that price of course i think it's time we talk about the future and of world of tanks and of course we got the most recent update news and what wargaming are thinking about what they're going to be bringing out in the near future of course they talked about the yo tanks and they talked about the new maps that will be coming into the game on september 28th muravanka redshire heilbronn and dukla pass of course they are available for world war ii and cold war for heilbronn and dukla pass redshire and muravanka are only world war 
2 uh, which makes it quite nice considering you know we'll be getting four new maps what well, i keep saying new but let's not actually give wargaming credit because these are maps that were in the game previously so i can't really say that they're new and that it's fantastic it's fantastic from a gamer standpoint where you'll have more diversity but from a kind of rewarding the developer for, for doing it no not particularly i think that these game these maps have taken far too long to come back into the game and luckily luckily they have actually are making their return what probably well just under a year later after being removed with the update 6.0 and having to reshuffle everything fourth marks of excellence is good i think that that's good that it's coming to the game you know and adds an extra little bit of something to the game for those of you who are interested in really grinding it out like i tried to in the excalibur but unfortunately didn't realize that the fourth mark wasn't in the game and so yeah that was a bit of a mistake by me and so i'm gonna have to grind that out again when the marks of excellence come into the game more information on the next update will follow next week so we'll get more information on what these big update is going to be probably on friday and i'll try and cover it for you guys on the saturday in probably an earlier upload probably around two o'clock uh, british time uh, so hopefully that will be decent for you guys and of course we do have rt 2.0 that's a kind of key thing that i've really been trying to grind for or gunning for on world of tanks uh, modern armor i think that the artillery is just it's not in a nice state i'm not going to call it overpowered because to be honest with you artillery doesn't really perform in games it's just the fact that they can one shot opponents i don't like it it's not competitive for your team it's not competitive for the person that gets hit by the artillery and loses every single one of their hit points considering that you know tanks like the fe 4005 are way too overpowered in quotation marks because they could one shot enemy tanks yet artillery is sat in the base where a tank that faces them something like a mouse sat like well not even sat pushing up forward through flanks and just getting hit round after round by artillery that they can do absolutely nothing about and losing a thousand hit points from a miss by a t92 of course we're taking the drastic side of it most of the artillery throughout probably tiers five to nine are pretty mediocre unless you're looking at the m5355 the gw tiger p or the gw panther things like that the su 142 uh, some of these are, are pretty broken artillery but for the most part things like the french artillery they've not really got that much of an issue uh, but i do definitely think that some of the artillery with these huge splashes and the huge alpha when they reach tier 10 is just not a balance whatsoever things like the m44 as well down at tier 6 is just an absolute clubber's nightmare uh, or a clubber's dream even um, and everyone else's nightmare uh, of course we've got the pc yo tanks uh, wargaming have said that they will be interested in making this into the game and that they would come in the future of course we don't actually know whether or not they will come anytime soon i would guess from some of your comments it's probably not going to happen for probably the next year um i wouldn't say that we've got plenty of tanks to come we've got loads of tank lines in cold war that are kind of lined up i think wargaming mentioned about the british tanks um yeah, we've got also the double barrel tanks, we've got the multi turreted tanks, we've also got the French wheeled light tanks, uh, the Czechoslovakian heavy tanks to come into the game. And so, yeah, we've got loads of things to come in before then. Don't know if Wargaming will stick to that kind of how the development goes on PC as to when they'll bring in the Yo tanks. Maybe they'll bring it in closer than we think. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I would suggest that these tanks are going to come into the game. I think, you know, the issues with light tanks in Cold War have definitely made the game mode less fun to play. And so you're going to see that within every single aspect of the game. And so, yeah, I don't think that this is going to be fixed. It's not really an easy issue to sit solve because they bring in an overpowered premium. If it was a tech tree tank, you know, they could nerf it very easily. But unfortunately, due to, you know, you purchase something uh, saying that it's going to be this and then if wargaming change it it's kind of like you spent money on something that got changed and it's no longer what you paid for it's probably within the terms and conditions that wargaming are allowed to do that but the controversy surrounding it would probably not be worth it because i know many of you 
would say, yes, just nerf the premiums anyway. Um, but half the time, you know, there's also the other side that if you actually spent the money on the tank and suddenly Wargaming have changed it from what you bought it for or the reason why you bought it, then mm, it's not so fun uh, for the person who paid that money, especially if it ends up being absolute doo-doo and that you never even wanted it in the first place. Now, getting off of Wargaming's back, um, I think that the there's kind of promise for the game. I think that there's definitely room for improvement. We have tons of things that need to be improved. New player experience. We've got loads of new tank lines in Cold War that need to come out to flesh it out, bring it up to standard with other AAA rated games that are also tank games, you know, looking at War Thunder, Armored Warfare tech trees with regards to the Cold War or the futuristic tanks, or not futuristic, but actually modern tanks that are available uh, right now in the world. Um, I think that, yeah, definitely bringing in more tank lines is going to be a must if you want to draw in those modern tank players, but I think War Thunder have done it perfectly. I think that they've kind of got that audience already, and I think it's going to be an uphill battle if you want to steal players uh, from that game I think eventually you will get some people playing but whether or not they stick around because of the new player experience like we've talked before yeah it's kind of difficult and I just don't think that the game is in a perfectly honest good place right now I think there's a lot of people who leave the game and get disinterested with the game I try and make content that is somewhat fun uh, can be challenging and of course I have to play the game, and if I'm not enjoying the game as much, then it probably comes across in my gameplay. However, I do enjoy the game. I will continue to make videos as long as I do enjoy the game, and I'm hoping that you'll stick around like you always do and comment, and there's just so much good interaction with the videos that I post, and it really is just fantastic. And of course, we posted that uh, console is dying video a couple of days ago. That did absolutely fantastic and I got so many responses talking about the game and, and the state of the game and how it's going and that was uh, fantastic and yeah, I can't really say anything else than that. Definitely enjoying kind of playing the diverse game, playing more of the tank lines and just trying out content that is just for fun because I think with World of Tanks it's hard to kind of come away from the whole I need to play a meta tank to deal the most damage. Sometimes it's actually fun to pick a tank that is absolutely shockingly bad something like a tog 2 play it and try and get that really good game where you actually come top and by a significant margin and manage to pick up you know 3000 damage in a tog somehow uh, yeah those games are kind of really rewarding i've enjoyed it and of course i have made a poll which I will be playing the worst tank that voted by you guys, which currently is the Churchill GC. So thank you very much. I will be playing the Churchill GC coming very, very soon on World of Tanks console. And of course, this channel. Let me know in the comment section down below and go and check out the community post with the poll on the worst tank and vote for something else, please. Uh, yeah, there's a few different options. We have the Tiger P. We have the... Oh, what is it? Oh my god, I've forgotten. Go and check it out. It's a fantastic way to kind of engage with the community and create content that you actually enjoy, or at least I'm hoping that that's kind of what I'm trying to do. But thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to the channel members. It's been a long one. It's been amazing that you've stuck around this far. And of course, if you want to check out more content, there should be some on screen along with the other update news to kind of conjoin with this one. And hopefully it kind of makes all sense with regards to what's going on in World of Tanks console. Other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your week and a great weekend, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.